so yeah, we fixed those. So. Awesome. Yeah. I appreciate it. Thanks so much, Corey. Yeah, just have uh, Brian and Mulder, or did you give me my number one? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Dang, now we have to do the rest of this game. <laughs> that was on. <laughs> It's a handshake. Do you not do handshakes? All right, fair enough. Do you always drop that thing? It's really loud. Welcome in, ladies and gentlemen. We are here from Steamboat Springs High School. We got some internet issues resolved. There's a little uh, little mix up, but we are all set now. Hard lines are patched in once again, and we should be streaming online at steamboatradio.com. And of course, you're hearing us here on KCOQ 100.5, The River. And so, oh, maybe, perhaps. Welcome in, ladies and gentlemen. We are here from Steve <laughs> Springs High School. To try this again. Uh, this is KCOQ 100.5 The River, also streaming online at steamboatradio.com. Apologies, there was just a little miscommunication. There's uh, some work done over winter break, and this is the first games here at the high school in the gymnasium, and so just had to repatch in and uh, got everything resolved. So we're good for the duration of this one, which is the Steamboat Springs girls basketball squad, and we'll be all set for boys at action as well. The Steamboat Springs girls, I've honestly been trying more to uh, see if there's anything I could have done on this whole internet conundrum, so I haven't been able to watch tons of this game, but it is 32-10. to 10. The visiting Grand Junction Tigers are on top right now. So, uh, Lowen Epstein is joining me here, and Lowen, talk about uh, what you've seen so far. Well, as you're trying to resolve that issue, like you said, it uh, looks like Sierra Harrison's been doing a really good job for the Sailors. I think she has five or six points. Uh, Carly Landing has a couple buckets, and I think Shelby Weiss does as well. So, Sailors down 33-10 to 10 after a made free throw from a Grand Junction Tiger. And there's 425 left to play. So let's get started. This this is Carly Lanning at the top of the key. She pulls up from three-point range. That'll be banked out and tried to kept in bounds by a Tiger, but it will not work. So the Sailors still have possession, and Carly Lanning will throw it in from the from the near side. Lanning finds J.C. May. May now number 21, the sophomore, back to Lanning. Back up top to May, across court, almost loses it there, and there's going to be a jump ball called as J.C. May got tipped out of her hands. And so this will remain Sailor's possession. Steam out is left to right here on the radio dial on KCOQ 100.5, The River. Of course, football happening on our brother station where we normally are, KTYV 98.9. Uh, thanks for tuning in, though. Steam Mosaic's girls basketball playing here against Grand Junction. At the other end of the court, it's going to be a bucket put in by Junction to extend the lead out now to 25. And Steamboat will now possess as J.C. May takes it up the court. She looks into Weiss. Weiss gives a nice pass off to Pavarnik, gets it back. Sorry, that was Epstein. And there is Shelby Weiss putting in two points of her own. And Steamboat responds here as the Tigers and Sailors going back and forth in quarter number three. This game was actually pretty close for a good portion of the first quarter and then really, you know, into a piece of quarter number two before finally Grant Junction kind of had a little bit of a run to get to where we are. Yeah, it was 10-2 to two at the end of the first, 10-3, to three, excuse me, and, you know, just coming out of halftime now, it's 35-12, to 12, so Grand Junction went on a little bit of a run in that second quarter, and uh, it's probably one the Sailors want to have back. Another bucket there from number 22, Mackenzie Yunker. 
Here comes J.C. May now. Slows this lead to 37-12. And we'll see if Steamboat can get back in with some more points. Again, you know, a pretty large deficit to come back from in the next, you know, 10 minutes and 34 seconds of play, including, of course, quarter number four. But Steamboat just has to set those goals. The girls, I talked with Brian about it. Uh, the girls, you know, they had that great game, their best game of the year when they lost 58-49. And then they kind of just forgot how to shoot. There's a free ball from J.C. May near side. And that one falls home 37-15 now the score. And I think they just kind of have to pull it all together now. They finally got everyone shooting in one game. Even Rose Epstein, I think, put in six points or maybe eight points. Uh... I don't know if you asked her that, but she did. And then, uh, <laughs> and then you know, their defense just kind of faltered somewhat in that. So I'm now waiting for that game where everything comes together for Steamboat. The defensive side of the ball is strong, and, of course, the offense is there because we know that they have it in them to, uh, to have a good shooting game. Absolutely. This is J.C. May now working at top of the key, kicked out to landing, back to May. She tries another three-ball heat check, no good. And it'll sail out of bounds. This will be Sailor's... No, it looks like it'll be Grand Junction possession. Might have been tipped off Rose Epstein. So with 150 to work in this third, Sailor's down 37-15. Taking it up for Grand Junction now is Brooke Laffler. Laffler kicks it out to Gabby Dieters. Dieters back to Laffler in the near corner now. Now it's going to be inside over to her teammate. This is back up to the top of the key to Mackenzie Younger. Now just moving the shell offense around. Good job there from Carly Lanning. Intercepted the ball. Not sure what. And then there's a whistle on J.C. May. Not sure what that call was. But this will be a change of possession. I think May got a reaching foul there. So on the throne will be Brooke Laffler. She will get it back from her teammate. Now it's Laffler at the near side top corner. Kicks it down low over to Gabby Dieters. Dieters back up to the top of the key. Now it's inside. Loses it for a second, and Mackenzie Yunker controls it back out to Laffler. Laffler, miscommunication there as she was looking for Shelby Leatherman. And that ball just sails out of, out of bounds off the errant pass. So Sailors will have possession. I want to thank Doc's Auto Clinic taking care of you by taking care of your car. The Amp Valley Bank, the Amp Valley's only locally owned bank member, FDIC, an Alpine Lumber employee owned and operated the contractor's choice and homeowner's friend. Steamboat possesses. This is going to be landing over to Pavarnik inside to Shelby Weiss. Tries to make a drive to the paint. Throws one up and it goes down. Weiss with another two here in quarter number three. And it's 37 17 now as Steamboat on a little bit of a run of their own. Absolutely. Well, Work to the near side. Drive in results in a pushing foul. Looks as though that is called against J.C. May, and so it'll be possession for Junction. May's third foul on the game, and so we'll see. J.C. May will be checking out as Sierra Harrison comes back in. So May just, you know, put her on the bench for a little bit and make sure she can play some heavy minutes in quarter four perhaps. Toss comes in, bounces free, all the way out to Laffler. She collides there with Lanning, and it looks as though that results in another foul. This one against Lanning. A pushing foul, but that was kind of tough. I mean, that's a 50-50 ball there that they were just competing for, it seemed like, and that's, uh, that's just me not knowing at all what, uh, what fouls are in basketball. <laughs> but it is a Grand Junction possession nonetheless, and they're going to take it in. Laffler will work it from the top of the key. Swung down to the near side. Taking it there is Dieters. Dieters up top now. And good job from Rose Epstein getting a hand in the lane. And then there's Lanning. And a good defensive set there from the Steamboat Sailors. And they've got a chance to uh, make a seven-point run here. Pavarnik now back up top to Lanning. Under 10 seconds to work now. Sierra Harrison controls it inside to Weiss. She drives in the paint and will get rejected as she went up for the layup. And uh, third quarter horn sounds. That'll do it for this third quarter of action. Sailors down 37-17. We'll be back in a quick 30 seconds. This is KCOQ 100.5, the river also online at steamboatradio.com. 
Baylor's down 37-17. We'll be back in a quick 30 seconds. This is KCOQ 100.5, The River, also online at steamboatradio.com. Hi, this is Doc from Doc's Auto I'm Clinic. back. When your car isn't feeling well, head over to Doc's for above and beyond customer satisfaction and the most expert service around. The techs at Doc's are ASC certified and go the extra mile to give you the peace of mind you need to know your vehicle is safe. We take care of you what and is Katie your family doing? by taking care of your car. We are located just past the <laughs> on the west end of town. I have no idea. Elk River Road. Doc's Auto She's going to end up running back, I'll bet you. Steamboat safe. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We are here from Kelly Meek Gymnasium. Your Steamboat Sailors down 37-17, but they're on a 5 nothing run <laughs> as we get into fourth quarter play. Are you still sick, man? No. Uh-huh. Okay. I'm not. Well, thank you for our sponsors, Steamboat Dental Center, <laughs> Dentistry Design for you. Visit Dr. Witty and the team or check them out online at SteamboatDentalCenter.com. Also, Mountain View Car Wash up and the Sailors clean the competition between Town and McDonald's on Highway 40. And Russell's Auto Salon, your premier full-service auto body shop where you always meet by accident. Call Russell's at 879-1515. Ball worked around at the top. Once again, the key is Laffler takes it there. Dishes one off to Yanker. And Yanker. 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 Sorry, gives it <laughs> off. Up top again, Yunker once more. Going to try and pass this one to the far side. Gets back and give and go play. Good ball movement here from Junction. However, they're just working it around in the shell offense. Yunker now fakes one. Top of the key to Laffler. Laffler tries the near side, reaching for it and gathering it in his Hutto. And Hutto goes back up to Yunker. Gives one off now to Dieters. Dieters swings it outside. Far side still beyond the arc to Laffler. Some good movement off the ball here from Junction, but your Sailors doing an excellent job. They'll give them that outside for the better part of this game because they haven't really been able to do too much uh, from out there, and it's not not as if we're facing against or facing off against that Roosevelt team that was shooting from you know Steph Curry range. Absolutely, this is going to be the freshman Erica Simmons taking it up now. Simmons kicks it over to Pavarnik. I'm not sick. Pavarnik now down low to Lanning. Back up to Simmons. She tries to find Epstein inside, and it'll just get ripped out of her hands by Mackenzie Yunker before it goes out of bounds. They're going to say it went off of Epstein, so the Grand Junction Tigers will have the ball now. Yunker, number 22 for the Tigers, controls it. She's going to kick it down low. And now it's back up top to Laffler over to Yunker. Now inside, this is Hannah Hutto. Hutto, nice bounce pass out to Yunker. She tries to drive it in now, kicks it back out to Laffer. Loads up from three, decides not to take it. And it's cross court back to Hutto. <laughs> inside to Leatherman now. And we're going to see a jump shot there from Gabby mm. Dieters, who gathered the loose ball. And it was no good. Just went out of bounds, so the Sailors will have it moving left to right. Taking this in is going to be Carly Lanning, not before there's some substitutions made for Grand Junction. As the Tigers will get a few fresh troops onto the court here. Up comes Simmons for the Sailors. She's going to just take this one, fire it off to Epstein. In and out of her hands, but she does control again. Fires to Lanning. Three ball, no good. Rebound. Taken by Epstein, and they say that she traveled there, so. Come on, Rose, what are you doing? <laughs> a little tough, tough crowd, tough crowd. <laughs> so we will have an inbound pass far side of the court here for Grand Junction. Tigers are up and across. Pass comes to Paradiso, and Paradiso is just dribbling, looking for her options. Picks up the dribble, fires one off, finding the hands of Broderson. Rodgerson up top again to Yunker. Gives on off to Hutto. And Hutto's just going to swing it back over to Paradiso. In low again. Inside the paint. Chance there at the post move. No good from Leatherman, but the rebound is put back in. And it's 39-17. Simmons now controls the ball. Number two for your Sailors. Freshman getting some significant varsity playing time this year. Simmons will have it near side, top corner. Hand off to Lanning. She tries a three-pointer. That'll be no good. Gathered by the Tigers, and it looks like they're going to get Lana Pavarnik for an over-the-back foul. So Tigers will. Erica Simmons. They got that on Erica Simmons. I got to laugh at that. I, I, I mean, <laughs> Simmons is always right there. She's such a feisty girl. I mean, she's only like five foot two. Yeah. 
So, so she's already got four fouls today, so she subs out and JC May comes back in. So with that foul on Simmons, the Tigers will have it under the baseline trying to break this full court press is Shelby Leatherman and just pickpocketed there by Carly Landing, but it's going to go out of bounds. So now on that far side, the Tigers will throw it in again with 5.13 left to go. Sailors down 39-17. Throw in there from Mackenzie Yunker just goes over the head of Hutto and out of bounds. So your Sailors will have the ball back. She ate that second bowl of Wheaties today and didn't realize her own strength. 5.13 left in the fourth and final frame here from Kelly Meek Gymnasium. 39-17 lead for Junction. Steamboat left to right here on KCOQ 100.5 The River. Landing over to Epstein near side. Still well beyond the arc. Epstein now. Try to give it down to J.C. May. Hits a defender but it ends up in May's hands. Back up to Epstein and she is going to lose that one but it may be a reaching foul. Indeed it is called against Broderson. And so Steamboat will once again have a chance to possess here and we'll see if they can get some points on this and maybe drive their total up to 20. They're one or two possessions away. J.C. May trying to get it there. Three ball, no good. And the rebound is going to be taken by Paradiso. She's going to come up court herself. Uh, she'll just dish one off, finding Broderson. Back to Paradiso, give and go play. Over to Yunker now, far side. Paradiso all alone behind the fence. Gets an easy layup to drop, and it's 41-17. And a little miscommunication there from the Steamboat defenders. Now it's going to be... A chance at offense, though, for your Sailors. This is Landing controlling it, just playing pitch and catch with J.C. May up top, and it's going to be kicked down low to Sierra Harrison, who drives inside, falls on the ground, and they'll they'll call a jump. Was that a jump ball call? Yeah, or, yeah jump ball call there, so your Sailors will have it at the baseline now. Carly Landing under the basket. Landing calls for movement, throws it up top to Rose Epstein. Epstein now pivots, loses it for a second, gathered by J.C. May, and May gives it cross-court back to Epstein, and they just can't can't handle the ball on this possession as there's a turnover there for your Sailors. Tiger. You just got a look of death from Katie Lake up here. <laughs> He's doing our video. Thanks to Katie for helping out with that. Layup from number 12, Angela Paradiso, is no good. Sailors back the other way. And another jump ball here as Harrison was tied up with the likes of Broderson. And so it turns in to possession for Grand Junction. 3.48 left, fourth quarter of action. And the Tigers will take this 41-17 lead for the girls in black. Harrison trotting down full court press in effect here for Steamboat. Harrison will just try and get this, but a quick break of that one as Paradiso got free. Gives it back to Yunker, who had the initial toss. And Yunker makes a few dribble moves herself into the paint. Puts it up and down. <laughs> Yunker with a long run there for the Tigers. I think it was just a shoddy defense from the Sailors. Don't know where it was. Rose Epstein now, far side, top corner. Gives it back to Landing. Over to Epstein now, down low to J.C. May. The pass goes in and out of her hands and sails out of bounds. 43-17 is your score here. 3.20 left in this game. Looks like Erica Simmons is going to check in again. She'll take out Epstein. And the Grand Junction Tigers control the ball, trying to break a full court press put on by the Sailors. Inbounds pass. And now this is going to be Paradiso working versus Laning. Looks like they brought in some JV players here, the Tigers did. Far side is Laffler trying to work it up top. Horshack now. And top of the key is Hannah Hutto. Looks inside, and errant pass goes out of bounds, intended for Horshack. So, uh, looks like they're going to say it tipped off of a Sailors player. So, Horshack will be on the inbounds pass under the hoop. Under three minutes left now here in the game. Do you want to thank 
Steamboat Ace Hardware, the helpful place for hardware, plumbing, tools, grills, garden, and more, offering customers knowledgeable advice, helpful service, and quality products, as well as UC Healthy Ampa Valley Medical Center, helping you get back to full strength when you're feeling short-handed. Also, Chris Puckett at the downtown Edward Jones office. Call Chris Puckett at 879-1851 for all your investment needs. Edward Jones, making sense of investing, member SIPC. And Steamboat Resorts by Wyndham Vacation Rentals. If you have friends coming to town, give them a call and ask for the locals connection discount at 879-8000. Free throw is uh, no good there as Leatherman was fouled. So the 1-1 one one free throw is no good. It'll be gathered by the Tigers, though. And now it's the Tigers working, trying to extend this lead. Horshack controls it. Up top, this is Laffler now, and she's working far side, back up top to Horshack, working versus Erica Simmons, kicks it back out to Paradiso, now it's Horshack working inside versus Lanning, back up top to the key to Paradiso, and it's going to be just knocked out by Weiss, but couldn't get a hold of it, so with 2.14 left, Grand Junction still controls the ball. As Carly Lanning knocked that one out as well. Looks like that went out of bounds. So the Tigers will remain with possession. It's going to be a toss that comes in. Chance is going to turn into two shots for Leatherman. Who airballed her first two chances. About a minute ago from the free throw line. 2.07 left in the fourth and final quarter of play here. 43-17 the score. Leatherman at the line. She'll toss one up. That is going to toilet bowl, but end up getting flushed down the drain for a point because that is good after hitting every aspect of the rim in the backboard. Another chance for Leatherman. This one, no good. Rebound is going to be taken by Steamboat for a moment. Then it'll be Grand Junction, and again, it'll be free throws. This is Finnegan who's going to go to the line. Uh, she will shoot a pair of free throws here with 2.04 to go, and Steamboat now with eight fouls. Junction only with one here in the second half of play. Eagles versus Falcons just underway here in that NFC divisional playoff matchup. What's your prediction for that game, Blum? Falcons. I agree with you. I think uh, Matt Ryan and his squad looking to heat up versus Nick Foles and the Philadelphia Eagles. I don't think it would even be close if Wentz was playing, though. I think you're right about that. This is Erica Simmons. Working, almost loses it, tips it away over to Shelby Weiss. Now it's Carly Lanning slowing it down, top of the key. Lanning, near side over to JC May. And puts her shoulder down, drops a girl. No call there, but it's Lanning now for a three-point attempt. Tried to kept in bounds, and it's and it is kept in bounds by Weiss. Good hustle there from the sophomore as the Grand Junction Tigers have it back the other way now. Weiss just tipped that one up and into the hands of a junction player. And so a three-point attempt from Horshack is no good. Rebound was tipped out of bounds by Weiss. So the Grand Junction Tigers have it under the hoop on this baseline. 83 seconds left in this game. 46-17 lead. A chance from the far side. Uh, it looks as though it's going to rim out and touch off a Tigers player and go out of bounds. So Steamboat will have possession now. Down in the last minute and 20 of the game. Here comes J.C. May. May is going to trot up court and make some moves. Passing into Simmons. Nice bounce pass to Harrison. Back to Simmons. And a shot from Simmons. Not going to drop, but it will result in free throws for number two, Erica Simmons. Titans Patriots later today at 6.15. Do I need to ask about that? <laughs> it would be astonishing, I'll tell you that. Maybe Mariota's is going to throw another touchdown to himself. <laughs> that was cool. 109 left. Sailors with 18 points on the board. Simmons at the free throw line. Her second free throw attempt is up and in. 
So the Tigers now looking to break this full court press still. As Horshack controls it, gives it up top to Leatherman. Now it's over to Gabby Dieters. Dieters now back up to Horshack, low side, and Dieters trying to work it in, almost gets trapped in the corner, and they lose it. Erica Simmons on the steal there, and errant pass just back into the hands of a junction player, so another turnover there for the Sailors. And another ball works out of bounds. Looks as though Lanning got a foul on that one, and so with the whistle, it'll be... Dieters, who heads the line for a one-and-one -one play, seeing if she can get a couple points on this. 46-19, to 19, the score here, 41.8 seconds left in the game. Again, apologies for the uh, abbreviated coverage, just a little bit of technological issues here. We do have them resolved, though. We'll be all set for the boys' game. Here is J.C. May, nice little Euro step. Throws him about to Shelby Weiss. Now to Lanning. Over to May near side. Open three. She takes it and makes it. J.C. May dropping in her second three-pointer of the half. 20 seconds on the clock now. Got to say, she told me she was going to do that. She said she was going to score 20 points. <laughs> 20 points? And I said that would be six threes and then another bucket additionally. <laughs> Don't know if she was quite there, but... Our team scored 20 points. Yeah, that's true. 46-22, they're right at their season average. Looks as though J.C. May has fouled out of the game with 14.9 seconds remaining. So Lana Pavarnik will come back in, number 14. The junior for your service. I haven't said a lot about her this season. She's a, she's a pretty big leader on this squad, though, and... You know, not not necessarily the highest score on the team, but definitely someone for these young girls to look up to. Yep. Here's a second shot now for <laughs> Horshack. Thank you. Goes up and does not drop. It'll be rebounded nicely by Shelby Weiss, and Weiss gives it to Lanning. Lanning now going to try and make her way out of court. Seven on the clock. Countdown commences. Shot from Lanning, no good. Oh, and the timeout taken. I'm not sure what this is about as this one's pretty much wrapped up. 46-22 is your score here. 5.4 seconds left to go. I don't know, you thinking about a comeback here? Yeah, we're pretty <laughs> close. <laughs> so here's how we're going to score 24 points in 5 seconds. So with this loss, the Sailors will drop to 0-12 on the season? Mm -hmm. You know what, though? They're going to win this year, so it's exciting. <laughs> I hope you're right. I am. Mr. Chase. You missed the best game of the year for him. Did they win? There was a, no, I'm just oh. saying that one where they lost. It was probably <laughs> the best performance that they've had all around. Only lost 58-49. You weren't there. I know. You left. You left me. I had to go. You left me. <laughs> so, there's that. Want to make Doc's Auto Clinic taking care of you by taking care of your car. Yampa Valley Bank, the Yampa Valley's only locally owned bank member FDIC, and Alpine Lumber. Employee owned and operated the contractor's choice and homeowner's friend. Out of the timeout, we'll see what the coaching staff has drawn up here for your sailors. Perhaps a half court behind the back shot? I don't know. Inbounders, Carly Lanning. Looking for some movement, not getting it. Now she's forced to throw it in. And it's taken away by Grand Junction. And they will just waste this one out on the clock. 46-22, your final here from Kelly Meek Gymnasium. The boys are up next. For Lone Epstein, I'm Vlad Chase. Thanks to Monica for bearing with us. We'll be back with the boys after this on KCOQ 100.5, The River, and online at steamoradio.com. Lone Epstein, I'm Vlad Chase. Thanks to Monica for bearing with us. We'll be back with the boys after this on KCOQ 100.5, The River, and online at steamoradio.com. The Steamboat Sailors are on the air. 
You're listening to Steamboat Sailors Basketball on 98. Sponsored by Doc's Auto Clinic, Yampa Valley Bank, Alpine Lumber, Mountain View Car Wash, Steamboat Dental Center, and Chris Bucket with Edward Jones. Get on SteamboatRadio.com and watch the game live. Check out the complete schedule while you're there. Steamboat Sailors Basketball. was also brought to you by Steamboat Ace Hardware. All State Insurance, the Allison Agency. UC Health Yampa Valley Medical Center. Russell's Auto Salon. And Steamboat Resorts by Wyndham Vacation Rentals. Remember, our sponsors support the sailors, so please support our sponsors. Sports on S. 98.9. Steamboat Sailors Basketball. Only on 98.9 and SteamboatRadio.com. Steamboat 8 is your go-to place for everything you need for your home. Bridget here from Steamboat 8, and we aren't just paint and power tools. Ace has a great pet section to keep your furry friend happy and healthy. A fun toy section stocked with items for all ages to make the perfect gift. Beautiful housewares, cookware, candles, and more to decorate and add beautiful style to your table. Stop into Steamboat 8, proud to support your Steamboat sailors, and see all that we have for your home. Steamboat 8, the helpful all-your-home needs place. Steamboat Resorts is a proud sponsor of Sailor Athletics. Do you have friends or family coming to town? That's what I will remember most about being a sailor is the brotherhood with my teammates. I'm Jake Berry. I'm a senior, and I'm proud to be a sailor. You've just heard the Sailor Spotlight on Fox Sports 98.9. Small emergencies, scrapes, sprains, and stitches, they're bound to happen. You deserve quick care from trusted physicians. At UC Health Yampa Valley Medical Center, our emergency care team is here for you and your loved ones. The board-certified physicians at YVMC are available 24 hours a day, seven days a week, to get you in and out the door quickly. You'll experience the same safe and high-quality care you've come to expect at YVC, now with smaller prices for life's small emergencies. Yampa Valley Medical Center, now part of the UC Health family. I'm Terry, and this is Phil from Russell's Auto Salon. If you need help with your auto collision repair, we make it easy. Just bring me an email and a claim number, and I'll take care of the rest. Russell's Auto Salon, Colorado's premier collision center, leading the industry in technology, where we've gone green with Enviro-based paint. Russell's Auto Salon, where we always meet by accident. 879-1515. Russell's Auto Salon. 879-1515. Russell's Auto Salon, where we always meet by accident. It's time for the Sailor Spotlight. A chance to learn more about your steamboat sailors. My name is Samantha Kennedy. I'm a sophomore in high school. My number is four. I usually play guard or point guard. I've been playing for seven years. I also play lacrosse after basketball season. I would like to go to college at U of A in Arizona. I don't know if I'll play a sport in college. It would be fun to play lacrosse in college. I would love to be a lawyer after college or just as my job. Outside of school, I work a lot with my parents. My parents own a store called The Homesteader, and I help them, and my mom makes chocolate there, so I help her make chocolate. My favorite subject in school would probably be French class. I really love learning about French, just because I use it. I would use it a lot more than Spanish, because my mom's from Switzerland, so everyone speaks French over there on her side. My favorite movie would probably be Ace Ventura with Pet Detective, because I've watched it since I was little. I've always wanted to be like a detective, and then I love animals kind of good mixture. Last summer I went to some basketball camps. I went to a backpacking camp that was a week long um, down in Wyoming at the Wind River Wildlife. So I just went by myself and there was people from all around the country came and there was about seven of us and it was a mixture between boys and girls. I was really scared at first because I've never met these people and then I was about to go backpacking for six days. It was really fun. We ended ended up ending early, like our backpacking trip ended early. Then we just kind of like swam. We did a lot of rock climbing. That was fun. That was my highlight of the summer. My goals for this year is just to do good, I guess. I don't know, to score as many points as I can. What I remember most about being a sailor is how the team acts with each other and how we all become friends after and during the season and how we just like start to get to know each other a lot better and then we just make more friends. Um, my name's Samantha Kennedy. I'm a sophomore in high school, and I'm proud to be a sailor. You've just heard the Sailor Spotlight on Fox Sports 98.9.
Financial investments are very important, but so are the investments of time, patience, and encouragement our young athletes receive from their coaches, teachers, and mentors. I'm Chris Puckett, your Steamboat Springs Edward Jones financial advisor. Now's the time to make investments that can help provide money for the ever-rising cost of college. There's more than one strategy to save for college. Please come in to discuss your options. For a free college cost analysis, call Chris Puckett at 879-1851 or stop by his office at 94 one Lincoln Avenue. Edward Jones, making sense of investing. Member SIPC. Hey, Taylor basketball fans. P.J. Wharton of the Yampa Valley Bank. Here to thank you for supporting our hometown basketball team. The Yampa Valley Bank is proud to support all of our student athletes and to sponsor this broadcast of Steamboat Sailors Basketball on KTYB Sports on FM at 98.9. Steamboat High School Athletics are an example of our genuine hometown. The Yampa Valley Bank, genuine hometown banking. Enjoy the game and go Sailors! This is Skip Yerdorf from Alpine Lumber here in Steamboat Springs. Alpine Lumber is a Colorado company and is committed to being the best supplier of materials and related services to the professional builder and homeowner throughout the Yampa Valley, offering lumber and building materials, hardware, paints, and stains. And we are proud to support Taylor's Basketball. Easy to find Alpine Lumber, located on Pine Grove Road, past Walgreens. Alpine Lumber, employee-owned and operated, contractor's choice, the homeowner's home. It's time for the Sailor Spotlight. A chance to learn more about your Steamboat Sailors. My name is Katie Lake, and I'm a sophomore at Steamboat Springs High School. I'm number 11, and I play, I guess, all over for basketball, but mainly point guard. I also like to play soccer and swim team, and I sort of just recently picked up swim team. It's super fun. My favorite stroke is probably breaststroke. No, 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 no. My favorite stroke is butterfly. Butterfly, yeah. I'd like to go to college at Broad Institute of MIT to be a biomedical engineer. I want to play basketball in college, but I don't really know if that's going to happen. So, hope so. And in 10 years, I see myself maybe getting my PhD. Not so sure about that yet. Outside of school, I'm also really involved in... Oh, shoot, I forgot to read this question. Outside of... Uh, wait, you know what? I don't really... Homework? Maybe? Outside of school. Too much homework. Too much homework. It's ridiculous. Uh, my favorite subject in school is... Biology first and then history uh, with Miss Copeland. Biology because it just clicks for me. My favorite movie, I don't really have a favorite movie. Yeah, no, I just really like movies. They're good, they're fun. Last summer, I, oh goodness, I went, no, oh, I did a lot of PT, rehab in my knee, because um, I tore my ACL about a year ago. So I was playing soccer and I dislocated my knee, so my tibia or tibia, I can't really remember which one's the thigh bone or which one's the calf bone, but the thigh bone went over the calf bone and um, my ACL just tore because it was stretched too far. So my goals for the season are I get to become a more reliable three-point shooter because that's something I definitely need to work on. It's my shot. And my goals for life are just to be happy and make a positive difference in the world. Specifically with, I guess, genomics or stem cell research. It'll be really fun. What I remember most about being a sailor is definitely my team because they're what makes it really, really fun to play basketball. And my name is Katie Lake. I'm a sophomore in high school and I'm proud to be you just heard the Sailor Spotlight on Fox Sports 98.9. Hi, I'm Joanna Allison with Allstate. My husband, Brett, and I are excited to bring Allstate Insurance to the Yampa Valley. We are so fortunate to live in this amazing place and want to help you protect all that's good in your life. Brett and I are here to provide local insurance advice and help customize an insurance plan that meets your needs. Stop by the Allison Allstate Agency in Steamboat on 5th Street, right across from Mahogany Ridge for a free quote. Or Google us at Allstate Steamboat. We are a proud supporter of the Steamboat Sailors. Sports-related dental injuries account for more than 600,000 ER visits each year. If your child is playing a sport and not wearing a mouth guard, they are 60 times more likely to suffer harm to their teeth. Steamboat Dental Center offers custom-fit mouth guards made from an exact model of your child's teeth. They are effective, comfortable, easy to clean, and also cheaper than a visit to the ER. Call Steamboat Dental Center today and receive half off a custom mouth guard. SteamboatDentalCenter.com. Go
Go Sailors! The team of Mountain View Car Wash and Detailing Professionals is proud to be supporting Sailor Sports this season. Whether a basic wash or a full detail, we know that the key to providing you with excellent service is teamwork and attention to detail. So while the sailors are focusing on cleaning up the competition this season, we'll be focusing on cleaning up your vehicle. With affordable washes and a wide variety of detail services, we have the game plan to fit your budget and needs. We are located at the corner of Highway 40 and Trafalgar Drive. Mountain View Car Wash, where you won't get a penalty for having a dirty car. It's time for the Sailor Spotlight. A chance to learn more about your steamboat sailors. I'm Dawson Lindquist. I'm a sophomore. I'm number 22. I play forward. I've been playing basketball ever since about fifth grade. I also like track and field. I like the high jump. I'd like to go to a college out of state, preferably, but it doesn't really matter to me. I would like to play basketball in college or I jump for a track and field. I see myself in 10 years living a happy life, staying connected with all the guys I met in high school and my friends. Outside of school, I am also involved in a a job. My favorite subject in school is math. My favorite movie is Finding Nemo. Last summer, I made some really good memories with my friends, and I worked a lot, got a lot of money, so it was pretty fun. My goals for this season are to have the best season, most fun that I've had since I've been in high school. My goals for life are to create a lot of good habits, to have a good paying job, and to be happy. What I remember most about being a sailor is all the respect and and humility that all the players show, and it's just fun to be around them. I'm Dawson Lindquist. I'm a sophomore. Proud to be a sailor. You just heard the Sailor Spotlight on Fox Sports 98.9. Hi, this is Doc from Doc Auto Plan. When your car isn't feeling well, head over to Doc for above and beyond customer satisfaction and the most expert service around. The techs at Doc are ASC certified and go the extra mile to give you the peace of mind you need to know your vehicle is safe. We take care of you and your family by taking care of your car. We are located just past the move on the west end of town off of Elk River Road. Doc Auto Plan, proud to support the Steamboat Safe. Hey, Sailor basketball fans, P.J. Wartson of the Yampa Valley Bank, due to thank you for supporting our hometown basketball team. Yampa Valley Bank is proud to support all of our student athletes and to sponsor this broadcast of Steamboat Sailors Basketball on KTYB Sports on FM at 98.9. Steamboat High School Athletics are an example of our genuine hometown. Yampa Valley Bank, genuine hometown banking. Enjoy the game and go Sailors! This is Skip Deardorff from Alpine Lumber here in Steamboat Springs. Alpine Lumber is a Colorado company and is committed to being the best supplier of materials and related services to the professional builder and homeowner throughout the Yampa Valley. Offering lumber and building materials, hardware, paints, and stains. And we are proud to support Sailors Basketball. Easy to find Alpine Lumber, located on Pine Grove Road, past Walgreens. Alpine Lumber, employee owned and operated, the contractor's choice, the homeowner's friend. CLQ Steamboat Springs. Welcome in, ladies and gentlemen. We are here from Kelly Meek Gymnasium. Your Steamboat Sailors just about set to take on through to Monument as it should be a pretty solid match up here. Be back after the national anthem. To Monument as it should be a pretty solid match up here. Be back after the national anthem. Steamboat 8 is your go-to place for everything you need for your home. Bridget here from Steamboat 8, and we aren't just paint and power tools. Ace has a great pet section to keep your furry friend happy and healthy. A fun toy section stocked with items for all ages to make the perfect gift. Beautiful housewares, cookware, candles, and more to decorate and add beautiful style to your table. Stop into Steamboat 8, proud to support your Steamboat sailors, and see all that we have for your home. Steamboat 8, the helpful all-your-home needs place. I'm Terry, and this is Phil from Russell's Auto Salon. If you need help with your auto collision repair, we make it easy. Just bring me an email and a claim number, and I'll take care of the rest. Russell's Auto Salon, Colorado's premier collision center, leading the industry in technology, where we have gone green with Enviro-based paint. Russell's Auto Salon, where we always meet by accident. 879-1515. Russell's Auto Salon. 879-1515. Russell's Auto Salon, where we always meet by accident. 
Financial investments are very important, but so are the investments of time, patience, and encouragement our young athletes receive from their coaches, teachers, and mentors. I'm Chris Puckett, your Steamboat Springs Edward Jones Financial Advisor. Now's the time to make investments that can help provide money for the ever-rising cost of college. There's more than one strategy to save for college. Please come in to discuss your options. For a free college cost analysis, call Chris Puckett at 879-1851 or stop by his office at 941 Lincoln Avenue. Edward Jones, making sense of investing. Member SIPC. Welcome in, ladies and gentlemen. We are here from Kelly Mink Gymnasium, where your steamboat sailors are just about set to take on well, Rudin Monument. Gentlemen, we are here from Joined by Lowen Epstein here Kelly today. Gymnasium. And uh, Lowen should be a good game. Should be a good game. This uh, this Fruit and Monument team is looking pretty good. Sailors looking to square up with them. It's uh, Eminiscent of the Roosevelt vs. Sailors game we saw a few weeks ago, both in Steamboat and in Roosevelt. So yeah, this will be a good one. As the size-wise, the Fruit of Monument team is much bigger. I mean, they got look at this roster. Almost every player on the team is over six feet tall. It's going to be something that the Sailors are going to have to deal with. Get Tyler Doyne. Knaus and Mac Rineker, they're six four players involved quite a bit. You know, I'll tell you what though, that uh, I was watching the warm up slowing and there was some shooting going on from number five. I'm I'm hoping Tyler Doyne can have a pretty good offensive output here today. As we are just about set for this opening tip off. Your steamboat sailors are in their home white uniform. You uniforms. sick? I'm not coughing. I've mean, got the hiccups, bud. Um, the home white uniforms are at numbers, black trim. On the other side of the ball, it is the Wildcats with blue and white numbering, white trim. So, Steamboat looks as though they will be going right to left. Maybe. We'll see what the first half of play brings us here on KCOQ 100.5, the river. We've got football on the other side, and our brother station, KTYV 98.9, usually the host here of Steamboat Basketball. We do have the hockey game coming up right after this. I'll be running over to the Howie Dome and covering that as well as Liberty comes in and plays your sailors. So, yes, indeed, Steamboat is right to left on the radio dial here on 100.5 the river, and we're just about set as Reneker will take this tip off against Barnes, and he will win it. Nice job there from Reneker, and immediately finds Jake Berry, who marches up court. Jake just had uh, a little hospital visit yesterday, so it's nice to see that he's out here today. We'll see how many minutes he gets. Kind of depends on how much uh, how much his body can hold up to. Talking to his dad. And it's going to be taken by the Wildcats. They were able to defend successfully. Passes in. Easy layup there. And the first two points of the game for Barnes. And just like that, a 2-0 lead for Fruit of Monument. This is Jake Berry now getting the start for the Sailors, number four, the senior point guard. He'll have it out of the top of the key. Shoots it far side, top corner to Rineker. Rineker now looks for Doyne. He almost gets it picked off, and uh, Doyne drives in. Can't get the fingertip in to go. So back the other way is going to be number 15, Marcus LeBond. As LeBond went up for the layup. <laughs> There's a whistle there. Layup was no good. So foul against Steamboat, and then a technical. 21. And it looks as though that's Barnes who got the point. Ethan Piles <laughs> trash talking already. Piles count today is uh, He's only one away. One away. One He's away. only one away. So good game here early for Ethan Piles. Looking to do big things. Number 23, the sophomore. <laughs> Two nothing is your score. As uh, we're we're underway here from Kelly Meade Gymnasium, Steamboat with the zero of those. 7.08 left, and it's going to be Doyne from the line here for your Sailors. As, like I said, he was shooting really well, and I must have jinxed him. My bad. Yeah, what do you, come on. Oops. <laughs> he was shooting well in warm-ups. <laughs> Two nothing. The first one is a miss from Doyne. 
And the second one is up and out as well. When it gets quiet like that, it's like you said, we're calling golf. Up for the putt. <laughs> he knocks it home. It's a no. So, Doyne didn't hit any of those technical free throws. Sailors will retain possession, though. This is Jake Berry. Inbounds pass over to Ethan Piles. He's working it now. Nice pass inside to Rineker as he goes up the layup. And uh, hesitation move there as the layup is good. Fruit of Monument back the other way. Trying to lead the charge here is LeBon. Gets it inside and in the paint. The layup no good. A rebound taken down, though, by Olsen. Kicked out to LeBon. He rips the one from three. No good. And again, an offensive bucket, or sorry, offensive board here for the Wildcats. They get it back. 2-2 score. And possession here for Fruit of Monument. Work to the near side. Davison, he passes one off to LeBon. Kicks one outside. And some good little post moves, but a travel call there against Flynn. And he took about 16 steps on his way to the basket there. 2-2 scores. Nemo with possession now as Doyne tosses into Jake Berry. Berry's just going to take this one up court, looking for some movement off the ball here. Work to the far side corner, and he finally gets some help from Piles up top. Inside again to Rineker. Deja vu play. Now gets back to Piles. Swung to Doyne near side of the court. Beyond the arc, Tyler Doyne kicks out to Piles. Doesn't like his shot, so he gets it inside to Badger Boy, and Frost he will put it up, and the layup's no good there from Knaus. And the rebound taken by uh, Fruit of Money. This is going to be Darren Davison. Kicks it outside. Now number 15, Marcus LeBron handles the ball. Back to his teammate, Blake Anderson, who drives in, pulls up from the free throw line, hits that J. 4-2 is your score now. Jake Barry working the ball up the court, moving right to left. Barry, number four, the senior. Only senior on this roster, doing a good job this year. Barry looks inside, finds Canals. One-handed grab there as he tried to get it back out to Doyne, but it was picked off by Darren Davidson. And when Davidson was dry, running back down the court, he just tripped and fell. And that ball went out of bounds, so Sailors will have possession once more. As this is going to be Tyler Doyne, number five, the 6'4 junior, on the throwing. Jake Barry taking up the court, right to left on the radio dial. Barry now switches hands, goes around, spin move, pump fake inside, decides on Ethan Piles, and Ethan Piles goes up the layup, oh. can't get it, but the putback layup by Mac Rineker is good, so that, that will tie this up 4-4, as Ethan Piles still one away from his goal tonight. And here come the Wildcats now. He was right there, man. He's right there. <laughs> Rolled away off of the rim. Looks as though a foul called against this Fruit of Monument squad. As that was against Davison. Maybe a little bit of a uh, revenge foul there. Perhaps. Not sure. As he didn't like the no call earlier. Now here comes Jake Berry. Gives one off to Piles. Piles just gets it over to Tyler Doyne. Doyne sends one into the soft spot. No one was home, though, except Boys in Blue. Yeah, that was a pass in traffic as Riley Flynn picked that off, took it down the other way, and it was uh, there was a whistle there, so the Wildcats will retain possession. This is Flynn now working inside off the inbounds pass, almost lose it for a second. Blake Anderson handles it behind three-point. The three-point arc tries a three-pointer, and that one's good. Blake Anderson doing big things to today here for this Monument team as Jake Berry matches that one with a deep two. And uh, after, uh, after that one, one pass possession. So 7-6 lead for the Wildcats. They're on offense again. Worked over, and Anderson wants more. No good on that one. Rebound is gobbled up by Lindquist, and he'll just kick it out to Ethan Piles. Sailors down by just one here, early goings, four minutes in to the game. It's going to be kicked over to Rineker, to Piles, stop and pop from three, no good. <laughs> Rebounded by the Wildcats, and they quickly come the other way. Davidson now gets it stolen by Mac Rineker in the paint, goes behind his back, up the layup, and one. Doesn't get the layup, though, so he'll be at the line shooting two. Rineker, good job there. Oh, Explosive, showing off what he can do. 
in the uh, defensive scheme. You know, sometimes players go behind the back and it's just kind of unimpressive. It's just one of those where they didn't even need to do it, but he just went right around the defender. His first one drops in. Um, from the free throw line, but he went right around the defender almost like a toe drag in hockey and just baited him and all of a sudden it's behind his back and he's into the paint alone. Riddick are snatching ankles out here. He knocks down the second free throw as well. And he's already at six points here today. 8-7 the lead now. Wildcats back the other way trying to find some more offense of their own in the Steamboat Gymnasium. Your Sailors up 8-7. This is Fruta now. Riley Flint takes it in. Nice pass there to his teammate, Caden Olsen. And Olsen gets the layup to fall. Rinnaker now working it. Gets the play from his coach. And he's going to slow it down here. Rinnaker, number 20 for your Sailors. He's been starting since he was a freshman. Finds Doyne inside. Doyne goes up. And there was no shot there. But Doyne drew the foul. So this will be a, just a possession foul, and the Sailors will retain possession. Ethan Piles under the hoop now, throwing it in, finds Doyne, give and go to Piles, tries to get the 16-footer to go, doesn't have it, doesn't have it, and now it's Monument back the other way. Through to trying to get some more points here. A 13-footer is short off the close rim. Rebounded by Jake Barry. 9-8 to eight the score. Your Sailors down by one here, but Barry on the charge. As they do have an offensive possession, now it's Piles. Ethan Piles calling for a pick. Gets movement instead from Rineker. Swings it out far side to Rineker, or sorry, Doyne. Now to Linquist. Near side again to Ethan Piles. Post move. Kicks it up top to Barry. Barry's beyond the arc, and he will just pass one to Rineker, who waits at the top of the key. Mac Rineker here. Looks for movement, and he's trying for Doyne. Almost ill-advised pass, but it ends up in the hands of Jake Barry. Nice job there from Barry. Always situationally aware. He's going to just backtrack to midcourt. Calls out the play. Gets a little bit of help and some movement from Piles and Doyne. Both, but a pass from Doyne. Intercepted, and all of a sudden it's going to be a foul on Tyler Doyne. Ill-advised there by Doyne is... You know, we've seen him having a block party here these past couple games. Sometimes, though, it's just not really what you want to do to go up and hit the hands of that opposing player because now we have Caden Olsen at the free throw line shooting two. And sure enough, as I say that, Tyler Doyne's going to take a seat on the bench. He'll check out Aiden Knauss, who we call Badger Boy, will check back into the game, number 14, Sailors so down 10 to 8. Second free throw by Olsen is good. Mac Rinnaker on the throw in now. It'll be Jake Berry taking up the court as Berry handles it. Almost gets trapped in the corner. Finds Rinnaker top of the key over near side top corner to Ethan Piles. Lobs it up for Rinnaker. Tries to put the one step in. No good. Put back by Aiden Knauss is good though. Points there for the Sailors. Wildcats control the ball now. This is Blake Anderson. He's been hot tonight. And Anderson looks inside, finds Marcus LeBon for the quick, easy layup there. Sailors still working on this deficit. 13 to 10 now after LeBon got his first two points of the game. Worked outside to Ethan Piles. Pulls up, doesn't drive. Instead gives it to the far side and Jake Berry. To Aiden Knaus and a travel called against Knaus there. Update on this divisional playoff game. Philadelphia Eagles versus Atlanta Falcons. Score is 3-0 here with just a couple minutes into the second. Who? Falcons are winning. It's going to be work to <laughs> work to the Wildcats. Way is they'll go for three deep corner near side, and it's knocked down there by Flynn. His first points of the game, and the lead extends out to two possessions. 16-10 now. Your Sailors looking for points on this drive. It's going to be Barry for three of his own. No good, and the rebound falls to a Fruit of Monument player. That was Blake Anderson on the rebound there. Now with under 40 seconds to go in this first quarter, Blake Anderson handles the ball. He's got piles on him, works it up to the top of the key, over to LeBron. LeBron now with the lanky 
number 22, Dawson Linquist on him, gives it back to Blake Anderson. Blake Anderson now kicks it down low to Riley Flynn, handoff back to Anderson. They're just working this one around, folks, as LeBron handles the ball. He's working versus Barry. And this is Jake Hawkins back up to Anderson, over to Riley Flynn, low side. He goes in, almost pulls up, but decides to kick it out to his teammate, number 15, LeBron, in the corner, sitting there waiting for three, and he hits that one, extending this lead to three possessions, 19-10. Steamo is down and almost getting doubled up here after one quarter of play. Leader of all scores on the court is Mac Rineker with six after that first eight minutes has concluded. One Think Docs Auto Clinic taking care of you by taking care of your car. The Ampa Valley Bank, the Ampa Valley's only locally owned bank member FDIC, as well as Alpine Lumber, employee owned and operated, the contractor's choice, the homeowner's friend. Don't forget Steamo Dental Center, dentistry designed for you. Visit Dr. Witty and the team or check them out online at steamodentalcenter.com as well as Mountain View Car Wash, Russell's Auto Salon, and Steamboat Ace Hardware, all proud supporters of Sailors Athletics. So, 19-10 here after one quarter in the books. Lowen, what would you see out there from Steamboat? You know, this monument team is really difficult because of the fact that they can handle the ball outside of the arc and shoot it extremely well. But they're also towering over this Sailors team, and, you know, they're controlling the paint right now, too, crashing the boards, making those layups. Sailors going to have to just play some better defense here. Monument it will control the ball to start this second quarter as... It's going to be intercepted there by Ethan Piles. Great defensive play there. So it's Piles back the other way. Finds Rineker far near side, top corner. And he tries to find Barry inside, but it's just tipped out and into the hands of number 14, Caden Olsen, who on the other side tried for a quick J. No good. Now it's slowed down. Rineker controls it. 19-10. Steamboat needs points on a possession here. Swung out to Piles. And they said a they gave offensive Rineker, foul. Yeah, Rineker with the charge. Tough. So possession now for the Wildcats once again as they try to just keep the run going. A couple three balls to end the first quarter of play. No points scored yet in quarter number two for either squad. It's going to be taken into the paint. Good little move here, but a charge of their own. This time called against Hawkins, and so teams trading offensive fouls and possessions with it. 19-10, Steamboat down, and Tyler Doyne checking back in to the game here as Barry will take a quick breather. 7-13 left, second quarter of play. Ethan Piles into Doyne. Piles will handle the ball as he takes it up the court, moving right to left on your radio dial. Piles now works it over to the right side, kicked it back to Doyne. Doyne now works at the top of the key. Doesn't know where to go with it. Pivots, finds Piles for a three attempt. Hits Ethan it. Piles! That's <laughs> huge! Ethan Piles hits his mark for the day. As his one point, his one point mark is overcome. He's beat that by 300%. <laughs> Worked up in an easy layup at the other end of the court. Keaton Olsen. Olsen. Nice job there from Olsen as Piles trying to work on this lead. That was a good shot there from Piles. As that was, yeah, it was three or four <laughs> feet behind the arc as Rineker controls it now. Low side spin move out to Doyne. Back up to Piles. Piles hand off to Doyne over to Canals. He tries a three-point attempt. No good there as Monument takes it back the other way. Quick passing, and Fruta's trying to find some offense here, and they're not shy about it. Layup is in. That one dropped from LeBron, and just like that, a 23-13 lead, 10 points separating the teams. Piles takes it up the other way for your Steamboat Sailors. Calls for a pick and gets it. Inside to Frosty. Back out now to Piles. Steps back, fakes the J. Now he takes it, and he'll drop another two. Ethan Piles will get... His Phenomenal point. Phenomenal job from Ethan Piles these last few minutes. 
Dylan Keithley over to Blake Anderson up top. Anderson back to Keithley over to Riley Flynn. Moving it around really well tonight is this Monument Wildcats team as the pass intended for Riley Flynn is going to be broken up by Mac Rineker. Went out of bounds, so Flynn will hold the ball as he will throw it in now. He'll find his teammate LeBond. LeBond down low over to Keithley. Keithley back up top to Flynn. Looking for movement here as Blake Anderson controls it. Tries to run around Ethan Piles. Nice bounce pass inside for LeBond. Is no good. He gathers his own rebound. Kicks it outside for three, and that's Blake Anderson once more. Three ball good from Anderson, extending this lead 26-15 now. Ethan Piles calling out the play, looking for movement. Back the other way, he's got Anderson guarding him. Over to Doyne now, working this pick and roll offense tonight as it's Piles driving in, goes up for the layup. But it looks like they're going to blow the whistle and it will remain Sailor's possession. They're giving him two. Oh, they're, they're letting him, okay. So it was a shooting foul, so Ethan Piles will be at the line shooting two. Number 23 for your Sailors, the super sophomore. Good things here tonight is his first free throw is up and in. Chipping away this deficit, 10-point lead now for the Monument Wildcats. Six times the amount of points that he intended to score, now seven. <laughs> Second free throws up and in as well. Monument back the other way. Trying to bait, break this full court press is Riley Flynn. Bounce pass inside. Don't know where the defense was there, but Marcus, Le excuse me, that was Caden Olsen. Olsen hits another layup. Rineker is going to take it at the other end of the court for Steamboat. Piles kicks outside to Knaus. Now it's Doyne for three, and Doyne knocks home his first points on the day. 28-20, Wildcats come back the other way. An open game here so far. It's been pretty fantastic. I'd say, you know, it's fun to watch with a lot of offense on both sides of the ball. Steamboat definitely needs to do a better job locking it down defensively and eliminate some of these three-ball attempts. That really is kind of the difference right now. Absolutely. I mean, they're, they're really doing as much as they can offensively. Need to just defend outside the arc a little bit better. It's going to be worked by the Wildcats around the perimeter of the far side. Well beyond the arc. Taking it now is Keithley. He gives one off and a layup, a floater from Anderson is good. And he is the first one to double digits. Barry back the other way now, works it inside. Decides no, tries to run around the pick. Hand off to Rineker. He tries a three-pointer. No good. And it'll be gathered by the boys in blue. So Monument back the other way. This is Ethan Godovin handling it. Now it's other side over to Keithley. Keithley now to Blake Anderson. He's been hot tonight as he decides not to pull up from about 18. Hands it back off to his teammate Keithley who's at the top of the key. He's got Barry on him over to Blake Anderson. Pulls up from three-point range. Good. Wow. Blake Anderson. Big things. He is having himself... A fantastic night. He's got 13 points so far today. 33 to 20 right now. The Steamboat Sailors are down by 13. The 315 left in the first half of play. Want to thank a few more of our sponsors. Steamboat Ace Hardware, the helpful place for hardware, plumbing, tools, grills, garden, and more. Offering customers knowledgeable advice, helpful service, and quality products. Use the Healthy Ampa Valley Medical Center, helping you get back to full strength when you're feeling short-handed. Chris Puckett at the downtown Edward Jones office. Call Chris at 879-1851 for all your investment needs. Edward Jones making sense of investing, member SIPC. And, of course, Steamboat Resorts by Wyndham Vacation Rentals. If you have friends coming to town, give them a call at 879-8000 for the Locals Connection Discount. 
So out of the timeout, Steamboat needs some points here, and they need a couple of stops more importantly because they've been scoring pretty well. They're shooting the field goal percentage isn't too bad here today. It's really been their defense that has been lackluster in their performance so far. 3.15 on the clock. Inbound pass comes to Jake Berry. Berry, of course, out of the hospital from yesterday and was cleared. Here's a nice little pass in. Post move from Rineker. Fade away. No good. Wildcats take over and they'll try and find some more offense. Leading the charge here is Labond. Dishes one back to Flynn. Near side deep corner. It's Labond again. He tries to drive in. Passes one. Intercepted by Piles who comes the other way. Piles looking for Jake Berry off the outlet pass. Just shoots it a little bit behind him and goes out of bounds. Turnover there from the Sailors. So, Monument the other way with, this is going to be Ethan Gedovin handling it over to Keith Lee. Going to be intercepted by Rineker, goes up, open layup is good. Rineker, good, good play there as he was heads up defense and then was able to come in and finish it with a man trailing him. As another interception there, he finds Jake Berry. And that's back-to-back -back plays where Eth, Eth, excuse me, Mac Rineker has intercepted the ball and turned it into points. Nice job there from Mac. Nothing less expected from uh, one of the preseason favorites for the MVP of the Western Slope League. 2.20 on the clock here in this second quarter of play. You can hear the coach. It's inaudible, but you can definitely hear he is heated up there in the Fruit of Monument bench. 33-24. Sailors have pulled to back within double digits now. Just nine point down. Update from this divisional playoff game. Philadelphia just scored. So they take a 7-3 to three lead versus the Atlanta Falcons. Wow. Nick Foles. It was LeGarrette Blunt leading the way, scoring the one-yard touchdown. Wildcats are going to have this on the inbound play. And this will be Riley Flynn. Flynn now trying to break this full-court press. Almost picked off by Rineker, but back to Blake Anderson as he shoots it cross-court. And this is LeBron handling it. Goes up versus Doyne. And an offensive foul there will be called. Doyne takes the charge. Candy bars there for the junior. 33-24 is your score. We've got two minutes, eight seconds to work here in this first half of action as Jake Berry will take it up the court. Berry now number four for your Sailors. He'll handle the ball, hand off to Ethan Piles. Piles now inside to Rineker, almost loses it, kicks it out to Knaus. Back up top to Jake Berry, fakes the handoff, keeps it inside to Rineker, does a post move, works around his man, throwing some elbows there, gets the reverse layup to go. Nice job there for Mac Rineker. Rineker's having a very strong first half of play. 97 seconds left in this second quarter. It's going to be the Wildcats taking it. Double dribble, though, called against Fruita Monument. 33-26, a six-point run here for Steamboat. They're going to try and increase that and pull even closer now here from Kelly Meek Gymnasium. It's Jake Berry to Ethan Piles near side. Piles kicks over to Mac Rineker. Now to Berry. Far side beyond the arc. Up to the top of the key. Now to the near side for awaiting Rineker. Up to Piles. Inside to Knaus. Aiden Knaus takes the dribble. Euro step. Layup is good. Nice. And an 8 nothing run right now for Steamboat. As Badger Boy gets another two points to his name. This is going to be Monument now. Riley Flynn handling the ball. Flynn kicks it down low over to his teammate, Jack Hawkins. And I didn't... What was that whistle for? Was that a shoot, shooting foul. Yep. So, LeBron, excuse me, Caden Olsen, who fielded the pass from Jack Hawkins, went up for the layup and was fouled. So he'll be at the line for two. 28-34 now after that first free throw is up and in. Sailor's still just chipping away at this deficit as Caden Olsen hits the second one as well. And this will be Jake Berry back the other way moving right to left. We've got under a minute to work here, folks. 
Sarah's got to do something big here to go into this half happy. And it's Rineker near side, top corner, over to Jake Berry, top of the key. Berry now to Piles. Piles over to Aiden Canals, far side, top corner, back to Berry. And Barry looking inside, decides to just flick it over to his teammate, Ethan Piles. Number 23, Piles works, goes between his legs, kicks it out to Doyne. Doyne, number five, just running this time off the clock. We've got 25 seconds to go as Rineker handles it over to Jake Barry. Barry now back to Piles. Piles over to Rineker. Rineker now, he's at the top of the key. Rineker slowing things down a bit. And it's over to Jake Barry. Back to Rineker. He drives in on the baseline, goes up for the layup, and one. Nice job there from the Sailors, running this time off the clock and getting two, plus another free throw attempt for Rineker. Shipping away at this lead. They didn't want the, Mon the Fruit of Monument Wildcats to get another possession. Nice job there from Coach Van Dahl as Mack Rineker gets set to take this and one free throw as that one falls. 30 to 35, excuse me, 31 to 35. Sailors going in the break with a four point lead. Unless Monument can do something here. And the three point attempt to end the half from Jack Hawkins is no good. Sailors going to the locker room, down by four. We'll be back with more. This is KCOQ 100.5, The River. And online, you're watching at steamboatradio.com. Let's go into the locker room, down by four. We'll be back with more. This is KCOQ 100.5, The River. And online, you're watching at steamboatradio.com. The Steamboat Sailors are on the air. You're listening to Steamboat Sailors Basketball on 98.9. Sponsored by Auto Clinic, Yamba Valley Bay, Alpine Lumber, Mountain View Car Wash, Steamboat Dental Center, and Chris Bucket with Edward Joe. Get on SteamboatRadio.com and watch the game live. And check out the complete schedule while you're there. Steamboat Sailors Basketball. It was also brought to you by Steamboat Ace Hardware. All State Insurance, the Allison Agency. UC Health Yampa Valley Medical Center. Russell's Auto Salon. And and Steamboat Resorts by Wyndham Vacation Rentals. Remember, our sponsors support the sailors, so please support our sponsors. Sports on FM 98.9 presents Steamboat Sailors Basketball, only on 98.9 and SteamboatRadio.com. I'm Terry. And this is Phil from Russell's Auto Salon. If you need help with your auto collision repair, we make it easy. Just bring me an email and a claim number, and I'll take care of the rest. Russell's Auto Salon, Colorado's premier collision center, leading the industry and technology where we've gone green with enviro-based paint. Russell's Auto Salon, where we always meet by accident. 879-1515. Russell's Auto Salon. 879-1515. Russell's Auto Salon, where we always meet by accident. The team of Mountain View Car Wash and Detailing Professionals is proud to be supporting Sailor Sports this season. Whether a basic wash or a full detail, we know that the key to providing you with excellent service is teamwork and attention to detail. So while the sailors are focusing on cleaning up the competition this season, we'll be focusing on cleaning up your vehicle. With affordable washes and a wide variety of detail services, we have the game plan to fit your budget and needs. We are located at the corner of Highway 40 and Trafalgar Drive. Mountain View Car Wash, where you won't get a penalty for having a dirty car. It's time for the Sailor Spotlight. A chance to learn more about your steamboat sailors. My name is Mac Rimmaker. I'm a junior in high school. Uh, I wear number 20. I am a forward. I started playing basketball in the third grade. I also like football and rugby. I don't know where I want to go to college, but if I do play in college, I will play basketball. Uh, in 10 years, I see myself with a successful job and living a happy life. Outside of school, I am involved in SMT. My favorite subject in school is math because it's my last class of the day. My favorite movie is Transformers because it's just an action movie movie, which is a classic. Uh, last summer, I visited my brother in Wisconsin. I checked out a couple colleges, and I did a lot of camping. My goals this season is to win league and compete for Western Slope Player of the Year. My goals in life are to just be a productive member of society. What I remember most about being a sailor is all the good guys and family that are good teammates. I'm Macronicker. I'm a junior, and I'm proud to be a sailor. You've just heard the Sailor Spotlight on Fox Sports. 98.9. Hey, Sailor basketball fans. P.J. Wartson of Yampa Valley Bank here to thank you for supporting our hometown basketball team. Yampa Valley Bank is proud to support all of our student athletes and 
and to sponsor this broadcast of Steamboat Sailors Basketball on KTYV Sports on FM at 98.9. Steamboat High School Athletics are an example of our genuine hometown, Yampa Valley Bank, genuine hometown banking. Enjoy the game and go Sailors! Sports-related dental injuries account for more than 600,000 ER visits each year. If your child is playing a sport and not wearing a mouth guard, they are 60 times more likely to suffer harm to their teeth. Steamboat Dental Center offers custom-fit mouth guards made from an exact model of your child's teeth. They are effective, comfortable, easy to clean, and also cheaper than a visit to the ER. Call Steamboat Dental Center today and receive half off a custom mouth guard. SteamboatDentalCenter.com. Go Sailors! It's time for the Sailors Spotlight. A chance to learn more about your Steamboat Sailors. My name is Molly Kleins, and I'm a sophomore in high school. My number is 25, and my position is point guard. I've been playing for six years, and I also like to play soccer. I'd like to go to college somewhere in Colorado or Wisconsin. If I play in college, it would probably be soccer. In 10 years, I see myself being a special education teacher. Outside of school, I'm also involved in club sports like soccer and basketball. My favorite subject in school is writing. My favorite my favorite movie is Utopia because of the majestic characters. Last summer I worked for STARS, which is a local sports adaptive program, and I definitely think that could be in my future and I really like spending time with the kids. My goals for the season are to become a better shooter and a better teammate, and my goals for life are to have a dog and name it Simon. Simon would be a golden retriever. What I will remember most about being a sailor is the positive environment that the school has. I'm Molly Kleins, sophomore in high school, and I'm proud to be a sailor. You've just heard the Sailor Spotlight on Fox Sports 98.9. Steamboat 8 is your go-to place for everything you need for your home. Bridget here from Steamboat 8, and we aren't just paint and power tools. Ace has a great pet section to keep your furry friend happy and healthy. A fun toy section stocked with items for all ages to make the perfect gift. Beautiful housewares, cookware, candles, and more to decorate and add beautiful style to your table. Stop into Steamboat 8, proud to support your Steamboat sailors, and see all that we have for your home. Steamboat 8, the helpful all-your-home needs place. Hi, this is Doc from Doc's Auto Clinic. When your car isn't feeling well, head over to Doc for above and beyond customer satisfaction and the most expert service around. The techs at Doc's are ASC certified and go the extra mile to give you the peace of mind you need to know your vehicle is safe. We take care of you and your family by taking care of your car. We are located just past Moose on the west end of town off of Elk River Road. Doc's Auto Clinic, proud to support the Steamboat Safe. It's time for the Sailor Spotlight. A chance to learn more about your steamboat sailors. I'm Jimmy Osborne. I'm a junior. My number is 34, and I play center or power forward. I've been playing since I was in third grade. I don't really play any other sports, but I'd like to play track. Uh, I'd like to go to college at Western or Mesa. I'm not sure if I would want to play in college. I, in 10 years, I see myself living a happy life, maybe in Steamboat. Outside of school, I'm also involved in team council. My favorite subject in school is history. My favorite movie is Jaws the Revenge, just because of how corded it is. Last summer, I worked at Stars and had a lot of great memories there. My goals for the season are to become the Western Slope League champion. My goals in life are to go to college and have a good life. What I'll remember most about being a sailor is all the good times I've had with my teammates. I'm Jimmy Osborne. I'm a junior, and I'm proud to be a sailor. You've just heard the Sailor Spotlight on Fox Sports 98.9. Small emergencies, scrapes, sprains, and stitches, they're bound to happen. You deserve quick care from trusted physicians. At UC Health Yampa Valley Medical Center, our emergency care team is here for you and your loved ones. The board-certified physicians at YVMC are available 24 hours a day, seven days a week, to get you in and out the door quickly. You'll experience the same safe and high-quality care you've come to expect at YVMC. Now with smaller prices for life's small emergencies. Yampa Valley Medical Center, now part of the UC Health 
family. This is Skip Deardorff from Alpine Lumber here in Steamboat Springs. Alpine Lumber is a Colorado company and is committed to being the best supplier of materials and related services to the professional builder and homeowner throughout the Yampa Valley. Offering lumber and building materials, hardware, paints, and stains. And we are proud to support Sailors Basketball. Easy to find Alpine Lumber, located on Pine Grove Road, past Walgreens. Alpine Lumber, employee owned and operated. Contractor's choice, the homeowner's choice. The River KCOQ Steamboat Springs. He's knocking down. Welcome in, ladies and gentlemen. We are here from Kelly Meet Gymnasium, back for second half action on KCOQ 100.5, The River. Also online at SteamboatRadio.com. Of course, we are here on our uh, brother station because KTYV 98.9 currently hosting some football games. And I'm Vlad and Chase joined by Lowen Epstein. Lowen, uh, a pretty good end to that first half of play for Steamboat, but really they've got to kind of cinch it up defensively. Absolutely. Blake Anderson for this Monument team has been heating it up from downtown. Got to get a hand in his face when he's behind the arc. I heard he is shooting roughly 43% three-pointers this season. Yeah, that's ab- incredible. That, yeah, that's incredible. I mean, most guys in college and in the NBA, they're shooting around 25 30%. So he's definitely an above-average kid, the 5'9 junior. So... Just got to contest some of those shots. Should be all right for the second half. Steamboat's down 35-31 after the first 16 minutes of play. And as we kind of stated, they've got some things that they can work on and improve upon if they're going to come back here in second half action. Third quarter about set to get underway. Steamboat's going to be left to right on the radio dial here on KCOQ 100.5 The River. And that'll be throughout the third and fourth quarters of play. As Doyne, Piles, Barry, Knaus, and Ricker are your five on the floor. And Doyne will take this inbound pass. As he gets it into Barry, and we're underway with the third quarter of play. Here's Jake Barry. He's been doing pretty well for having been in the hospital yesterday. And it's going to be worked now by Doyne to the top of the key near side. Goes behind the back on a dribble. Tries a bounce pass to Canals. Intercepted. Back the other way. Comes through to Monument. And a layup is good. And Davison has his first points of the day on a quick strike. And then Rineker back at the other end. Gets two for Steamboat. And he's having himself a very good offensive output. Nice job there from Mac Rineker again the Euro step. Finger rolling that one in. Blake Anderson now low side. Kicked out to Darren Davidson. He hits the three-point shot. And Fruta coming out hot here to start this third quarter. Jake Berry now controls it near side top corner. Berry now inside the piles. Back outside to Canals. He tries a three-pointer. And before the shot goes off, Refs are going to blow the whistle, get him for the traveling call there. And uh, that's a bad turnover to get when you're a experienced player on this team. So Fruta controls it. Going to be taken by the Wildcats near side deep corner. Driving the baseline. They'll pass out to Davison. And they say it went off from the Steamboat Defender last. And so it will be a maintained possession for the boys in blue. 40-33 to 33 the score here. Just a minute and six seconds in to this third quarter of play. And it'll be an inbound, pl- inbound pass from Flynn. Quickly finds Davison, who has all five points for Fruta here in this third quarter so far. Quickly to the hands of Anderson. Anderson swings one over. Back to Flynn. Near side now to Anderson again. Three ball from Anderson. No good. Rebounded by Piles. And he's going to try and turn it up. And Piles with an ill-advised pass. Anderson intercepts. And Fruta Monument on offense again. Anderson now controls the ball. He's got Doyne working on him. Kicks it out to LeBron. LeBron pulls up from the free throw line. That'll be no good. And Rineker's at the rim to gather that rebound. Ethan Piles now looking for the pick from Mac Rineker. Goes around it. Drives inside. And they're going to get the charging foul on Ethan Piles. He did make the layup, but it will not count as an offensive foul there for the sophomore. 
So back the other way, Riley Flynn, number 22 for the boys in blue. Outlet pass over to Marcus LeBron. LeBron now working versus Piles. Back out to Flynn. Low side corner. This is Jack Hawkins. Finds Blake Anderson inside, and that's a layup. And he hit that one versus Rineker. And Blake Anderson considerably smaller, doing amazing things out here. Now it's going to be Jake Ferry. Takes this one, top of the key, tried to give it off to Knaus. And it'll be Steamboat who takes it back. Rineker gets it to Barry. Barry three ball, no good. Rebounded there by Anderson, and he'll just march out for the Wildcats. 42-33, a lead here for Fruit of Monument over your Steamboat Sailors. It's going to be swung around the perimeter of the far side. Movement comes. It's Anderson. He's got an open three. Takes it and makes it. Wow. Blake <laughs> Anderson. How many points does that put him at for the 18. day? 18. 18 points is... Rineker now trading three-pointers as he walks it up and just pulls up from way downtown. He's also at 18. Nothing but net there for Mac Rineker. And Riley Flynn now controls it. Another three-point attempt from Jack Hawkins is no good. Gathers his own rebound, though, and puts up the layup. So there's, there's you know, easy points there for Fruta. Sailor's got to get something going here. Got to heat it up just a tad bit more. Rineker inside now. Spin move for the right-handed layup, and that one's up and in as well. So the Sailors working on a 47-38 deficit. Rineker is now at 20 points. Wow, that's this is one of his best games of the season. It's going to be taken here by Fruta. Still plenty of time left. Layup is going to be whistled down. Foul called as it'll be a shooting foul, and Flynn will be going to the line for two. Try to push it back out to double-digit lead again for Fruta Monument. Yeah, we've got a quarter and a half left, and Rineker's already at 20. So yeah. So is um, Blake Anderson's at 18. Mm-hmm. First both, one drops. This juniors, too. Update from the link in Philadelphia. Atlanta Falcons just scored, so now they're up. 10 to 7. Going back and forth. Good game there from the divisional matchup in Philly. Which is exactly what you hope for. Tyler Dorn will be on the inbounds pass for the Sailors. He'll find Jake Berry. Berry now moving left to right on the radio dial. He's going to hand it off to Piles. Piles now back up top to Tyler Dorn. Dorn looking for some movement, finds Rineker on the outside, far corner, top side. And inside is a flying Ethan Piles who goes up for the floater, puts it off the backboard. That one's good. Other way now, quickly. Good job there from Ethan Piles. It was Riley Flynn going in along the baseline. And Ethan Piles just broke that one up, sent it out of bounds. They're going to say it went off of Flynn. So a turnover there for the Monument Wildcats. Sailors now control the ball. Steamboat's Jake Barry takes it up court, finds Piles, swung out to Doyne. Tyler Doyne now looking, deciding on Piles' near side, still beyond the arc. Ethan Piles makes a couple crossovers, now gives it off to Mac Rineker. Rineker looks. Wow. <laughs> and a long ball, no good. Three. Rebound. That was a deep three-pointer. Um, I mean, that was like closer to half court than it was to the arc. <laughs> and it turns into Tyler Doyne's fourth foul today. So he is going to check off for the Steamboat Sailors. Only one away from fouling out of this one, and that's a pretty key piece for your Sailor squad. So he'll sit for now and hopefully be utilized in fourth quarter play. Through to Monument now. Has this one looking for some more offense. Floater. Man, they have those floaters down. I mean, the putback is what gets the points from Olsen, but they all have really not shirked away from kind of going for the four-foot J floater off the bank. Absolutely. This is going to be Jake Berry handling it. Kicks it outside. Rineker now top of the key. Pivots. Goes back. He's got Flynn on him. Tries to run around the pick, and he'll kick it back out. Nope. He instead goes up with a two-foot layup, hits that one. I thought he was going to pass it back outside. He was trapped there. He just split the defenders and buried that one. 
So Darren Davidson will control the ball over to Riley Flynn. Inside now, that was Marcus LeBron. He found his teammate, Caden Olsen. Went up for the layup. It was no good. And Ethan Piles back the other way. Pulls up from the free throw line. He wanted a foul there. Either way, he hits that one, 51-44. Yeah, a guy came back and played a little wolf on him and swatted his hand. And here's an interception from Rineker. He's going to go up for a layup and is fouled in the process. Davison, that's not the first time that that has been the case here today. Davison is the man who was coming back defensively, and he gets the foul against Rineker, who couldn't drop it in. Davison now with three on the day, and Rineker will shoot two here for Steamboat. 2-12 left in the third quarter of play. 51-44. Make that 51-44 after the first one. <laughs> it is in and out for Mac Rineker and company. And so a quick substitution. A couple of different changes being made here for the Wildcats. Sailors on the floor. Piles. Barry. Linquist, Knaus. And the scorer here. Mac Rineker who just dropped in. His second rebound there. 2.09 left. Wildcats possession. 51 45. Sailors down by just six and looking for a good defensive hold here, trying to claw back into this game. Now inside, that was Blake Anderson. And the putback was Ian Barnes. In his first minutes of the game, went up for it, got the foul, and hit the layup. So nice and one play there from Ian Barnes, the sophomore. Number 21 for this Monument team, sitting at 6-3. He'll head to the line for his free throw. That one's good. Sailors will control the ball now. There's going to be a timeout called by Coach Van Dahl. And your Sailors are down by nine. No, they say maybe it's not a timeout. Perhaps he's just saying he's got to get hands up. We've seen that one before. You're right. You're right. So it's no timeout as Jake Berry will control possession here. Berry now hand off to Rineker. Or excuse me, that's Ethan Piles. Tries to find in. Knaus outside. Somehow does. Back up top to Jake Berry. Can't get the three-pointer to fall. And it's Blake Anderson quickly back the other way. Anderson now drives in. Goes up for the layup. He'll get fouled, but the layup was no good. So Anderson will head to the line to shoot two. They'll get Jake Barry on that foul. Coach Van Dahl is not happy right now. So he'll take a timeout before the free throws. We have buck 33 left to go in this third quarter of action. Sailors down by nine. I want to thank Doc's Auto Clinic, taking care of you by taking care of your car. The Ampa Valley Bank, the Ampa Valley's only locally owned bank member, FDIC. Also Alpine Lumber, Steamboat Dental Center, Mountain View Car Wash, and Russell's Auto Salon, all proud supporters of Sailors Athletics. 93 seconds left, as Lowen said, 54 to 45. Steamboat was clawing back in there. They were only down by six, and then all of a sudden the three-point play with the and one really drew this one back out to almost double-digit uh, deficit here and Steamo just needs to again lock it up defensively this is already you can see one of the most points that they'll have allowed this season because we're just three quarters through it almost three quarters through it and they've already allowed 54 points absolutely got to do a better job like I said contesting these three balls and this is Blake Anderson as we speak kicking it outside off the inbounds pass and Marcus LeBron handles the ball into Blake Anderson now Anderson at the top of the key over to LeBron low side he goes in finds his teammate and that is Ian Barnes who just got his first minutes of the game here I mean a no, few he, minutes. he got a was he in earlier he was in but he got that technical and I think the coach sat him for a quarter and a half okay so Ian Barnes there with the layup now it's Jake Barry back the other way with a three pointer that one's good Jake Barry the senior taking charge here for the boys in white 56-48. Steamboat trying to stay close here against Fruit in the last minute of play in third quarter. It's going to be worked up top now to Anderson. Swung over to the far side to Davison. Davison takes the three ball. No good. Rebound. Goes back to Davison. He kicks it over to Hawkins on give and go play. Now Davison again. Half a minute left here. And it'll be controlled by LeBond. He's towards the midcourt line. Marked up upon by... 
Ethan Piles swings one over again to Hawkins, far side, and he'll just step backwards here with about 15 seconds left now. They're just trying to kill it off and not allow Steamboat to have another possession. Exactly what the Sailors did to Fruta in that second quarter. Interception, though, and... Oh, excellent job from Mac Rineker, but then he lost the ball. Charging called wow. against Barnes. So with 2.9 left to go, the Sailors will, excuse me, the Fruit of Monument Wildcats will draw the offensive foul, and Tyler Doyne will be on the inbounds pass looking to make something happen here. Doyne, number five here, Sailors. We've got everybody loaded deep. The middle school quarterback, he sends it down and hits the roof. Couldn't make it happen. So that's a turnover there. That was pretty funny, though. <laughs> Still 2.9 on the clock. Now it's Monument looking to make something happen as they're under the basket controlling it. On the inbounds pass will be LeBron. Finds his teammate outside. Pull up Jay. And that one's good from Darren Davidson at the buzzer. Wow, so... A mistake from Tyler Doyne turns into points for the Wildcats. It's and a 10-point spread here from Kelly Meek Gymnasium back in 30 seconds with the fourth quarter of play. For Lone Epstein and Vlad and Chase, this is KCOQ 100.5, The River. A 10-point spread here from Kelly Meek Gymnasium back in 30 seconds with the fourth quarter of play. For Lone Epstein and Vlad and Chase, this is KCOQ 100.5, The River. Hi, I'm Joanna Allison with Allstate. My husband, Brett, and I are excited to bring Allstate Insurance to the Yampa Valley. We are so fortunate to live in this amazing place and want to help you protect all that's good in your life. Brett and I are here to provide local insurance advice and help customize an insurance plan that meets your needs. Stop by the Allison Allstate Agency in Steamboat on 5th Street, right across from Mahogany Ridge for a free quote. Or Google us at Allstate Steamboat. We are a proud supporter of the Steamboat Sailors. The River, KCLQ, Steamboat Springs. Back with you for the last quarter of action here. It's 58-48 after this first three quarters of play have concluded, so just one to go here on the River 100.5 and online at SteamboatRadio.com. Vlad and Chase joined by Lone Epstein. A good first. Uh, <laughs> you take over. You got the hiccups there. Yeah. So yeah, good. Uh, good first. First quarter in that second half as we're heading into the fourth year. Sailors down by ten. This is Darren Davison. He just hit the buzzer beater to end that third. He handles it far side top corner. Davison now looks inside and. There's a fadeaway jumper from Jack Hawkins. Doesn't fall. And on the glass is Ethan Piles. Outlet pass over to Mac Rineker. Rineker now drives inside. Finds Ethan Piles. He takes a three-pointer from the top of the key. That one doesn't fall. Monument controls it. It's going to be worked up court by LeBond. Play a little point guard here. Trying to get some movement off the ball. Works his way in the near side, finds a deep corner near side, and it's going to be Hawkins to Anderson, swings out to Davison, up top now to LeBond, and LeBond gives it to Anderson, he's going to try and drive in, Anderson oh. though swatted <laughs> by Aiden Knaus, nice job there from Big Canals towering over Anderson. Canals is sitting at 6'4", while Anderson's at about 5'9". Either way, it goes out of bounds on Canals, obviously, so Monument controls it. This is Flynn inside, posting up versus Canals. Doesn't get it. Another block recorded there from Canals. Sends it outside. Doyne handles it now. Tyler Doyne, number five for your Sailors. Gives it out to Jake Barry. Barry over to Rineker. Top of the key. Rineker inside. Over to Doyne. He controls it. Outside now behind the arc. Tries a three-point shot. No good. Blake Anderson's there for the rebound. It'll be Wildcats possession. Six and a half to go in the game. Kick to the near side. A little jumper and a fade. No good. Doyne picks it up. He's got Barry up, up court. Takes himself and does not get the layup to drop. Eventually, though, Barry's in there fighting for it, and the ball goes out of bounds, but Barry was the last to touch it. So possession for the Wildcats once again. 
And so no scoring so far in the fourth quarter of play, and we're about a minute and 41 into it as Fruita Monument takes over. This is Monument now working. Inside is Ian Barnes. Went up for the layup. No good. And Mac Winter came down with it. Just lost it for a second. There's going to be a timeout called here from Coach Ryan Hayden of the Wildcats. Ten-point game. I want to thank Steamboat Ace Hardware, UC Health, the Yampa Valley Medical Center, Chris Puckett of the downtown Edward Jones office, and Steamboat Resorts by Wyndham Vacation Rentals, all proud supporters of Sailors Athletics here. Today on KCOQ 100.5, The River, and also, of course, online at SteamboatRadio.com. Good game so far. Point leader for all scorers is Mac Rineker with 23 but no one has scored so far in this fourth and final quarter of play as we're about two minutes through it. So has the defense finally shown up for Steamboat, perhaps? Now all of a sudden, they've got to make sure their offense doesn't fade quietly into the night. Absolutely well said there. As kind of Steamboat, poetic, huh? Steamboat's just got to, exactly, Steamboat's just got to amp it up a little bit more. You know, they're playing their hearts out right now. They just got to kick it up another notch, and I think they can come back and hopefully run away with this win. It's going to be worked in by the Wildcats off of the timeout. It's Davison inside now, and a layup drops for Barnes, who gets his first two points of the fourth quarter of play. Inbound pass now comes to Mac Rineker for Stebo. Rineker is going to march up court. He's calling for a little bit of help, and there's Knaus with the pick. And now here's Rineker, picks the dribble up, gives it to Doyne. Three ball from Tyler Doyne, a little bit short. He needed about another two inches on that, and it would have gone in. Almost there from Doyne. It's LeBron the other way, though. Other way now, excuse me. Blake Anderson shoots it cross court. Now it's inside. Jack Hawkins back up to LeBron, top of the key, and it's going to be almost intercepted by Doyne as he came flying into that monument bench and uh, was out of bounds on a sailor on Doyne. So Darren Davidson will throw it in. Davidson now over to LeBron. He's on. He's at the top of the key. Over to Ian Barnes. Back out to LeBron. LeBron has Rineker on him. Over. Now it's inside to Barnes once more. Goes up for the layup. No good. Gathered at the glass by Mac Rineker. Rineker back the other way now. Pump fake out to Doyne. Back over to Ethan Piles. Far side top corner. Piles now. Working number 23 for your sailors. The sophomore. Having a pretty good game tonight. After scoring only zero the last game. He's at 11 today. And it's Jake Berry over to Doyne. Tried to find Rineker inside. It was just broken up there by Jack Hawkins. Went out of bounds on blue, so Sailors will still have the ball. This is Rineker under the hoop. Rineker give and go. Back out to Ethan Piles. Tries the wide open three-pointer. Just misses, and that one... That's a tough one to miss there as they're down 60 to 48. Here come the Wildcats with a 12-point lead over your Sailors looking to extend it now. And it is LeBon getting it down low far deep corner. It's Hawkins there and looks as though kicking against Mac Rineker. Possession will stay with the boys in blue. Hawkins is going to throw this one in. Rineker is going to be right in his face. But the toss comes out and is gathered there by LeBon. And then Rinker again <laughs> kicking that one. Just getting a little antsy with his defense, sticking his feet out, trying to break up these passes. And it looks like he's playing soccer out there. Smow! Corner kick. <laughs> Interception by Doyne. He's up and lays it, but does not uh, drop. You got to make that one. What a play, though, from Tyler Doyne. He intercepts that one. And so had a great chance. Couldn't make it go. 12-point lead still. And now it'll be the Wildcats again with some offense. Barnes puts it home. Ian Barnes killing it this second half. And another two for him as it's Aiden Canals back the other way. Tries the three ball. No good. And Rinniger came flying in there. Couldn't beat out David Davidson for the rebound. And <laughs> coast to coast goes Davidson. And gets the easy layup. 
Starting to get away from Steamboat now. 16 points down with just three and a half minutes to go. Jake Berry stop and pop from eight feet. No good. And another empty possession for the Sailors. That's got to be three or four in a row now that Steamboat has not been able to get points on. And the Wildcats come up again, trying to just extend this lead even more. Sailors on their heels a little bit here. Davison's just going to float one in. He finds his mark. Kicked out, and it comes back to Davison once more through the hands of Hawkins. Gives it off now to LeBon. Intercepted and taken away by Rineker, who's up for two more. Mac Rineker with his first points of the fourth quarter with Steamboat's first points of the fourth quarter. Yeah. And we are five minutes in. So that is not how you come back in a game. You're down 10. I mean, they were down by 10, 58-48, heading into here. And that was it. That was the first time they scored here in the fourth. Unfortunate to see that. But Rineker's at 25 points. Yeah, that's good. That's a good thing. <laughs> They've kept Blake Anderson in check this quarter, too. He hasn't scored anything since early in the third. So 64 to 50, Sailors working on a 14-point deficit. See if they might be able to come back in this one. Still time to do it. 14 points isn't insurmountable. That's seven possessions at two. And really, it just is kind of determined on how their defense goes and if they might be able to actually make some of these uh, some of these offensive buckets that they've had great opportunities with. They just haven't been able to put them home. Yeah, it's frustrating. You can see it. Tyler Doyne, you know, he's 6'4", has the breakaway layup. He's really got to make that one fall if the Sailors want, I mean, in the future. If they're in a, if they're in a close game like this with an elite team like this Wildcats team is, I mean, personally, this might be the best team they've played all year. Well, I mean, would you, would you disagree? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's tough. They're, they're up there for sure. I think Roosevelt and Silver Creek and Ponderosa all are kind of right in the same echelon as this Fruit of Monument, if you'd... I'm not, I, it'd almost be too close to say who would be the toughest. They've all had some good games, but Fruit of Monument, you're absolutely right. They're, they're playing really well. Their shooters were on early, and they've been consistent throughout each quarter of play here, putting points up against your Sailors, which is not an easy thing to do. This is LeBron now finding his teammate, and Jack Hawkins goes up for the layup, but... I think that's an offensive foul. It is. So they're going to get Jack Hawkins for the charge there as he went up on the baseline. And it's Mac Renneker now on the throw-in. Renneker will take it up the court, moving left to right. Got to make do of this, these possessions fast. Can't have any more empty ones. Got to put some points on the board. He's trying to get around the pick. Finds Ethan Piles, top of the key. Piles, spin move inside, step back. Doesn't decide to take it. Now it's Renneker inside off of the pass from Piles. And nice job there from the Sailors as Renneker gets the layup to fall. Monument trying to break this full court press now. And they do. This is Ian Barnes, top of the... Working it over, over to over to his teammate Davidson now. He's just holding the ball. And it's Lamond back to Davidson. Inside now to Ian Barnes. Wide open. Goes up for the layup. Gets it. That's tough for the Sailors defense. Yeah, just enough movement by Fruta to distract him. Merniker at the other side. Three ball no good. Rebound gathered for a moment by Fruta. Turns into a jump ball, though. And that'll be a steamboat possession. So nice job from Barry not giving up on it. And gets the ball back for the Sailors. They need some points here with under two minutes to go in the game. 14 points separating these two teams. Not, uh, not something that's impossible, but time is not on their side anymore. Foul, no shot there, but still maintain possession for Steamboat as Rineker was fouled. And he'll take this inbound pass yet again. Yeah, you see that? Yeah, it took you like seven times, bud. <laughs> this is Ethan Piles now with Boom. the three-point attempt. That one's good. Piles with the corner three. Chipping away at this deficit still. Riley Flynn now controlling it, trying to get by this Sailors. Tough full-court press. And they're gonna there's going to be a timeout called by Coach Van Dahl. No, I think that was the, uh, the Wildcats. Wildcats coach. That was Coach Ryan Hayden. See that? Boom. First one. Didn't. It's not up. First so, one. 66-55 is your score. Sailors down by 11. We've got a buck 27 to work here. Sailors want to come away with this W. 
It's going to be tough, but then it's not impossible. Check this out. Sick. <laughs> Talks on a clinic. <laughs> it's proud support of the Sailors Athletics, as well as Yampa Valley Bank, Alpine Lumber, and, uh, and Steamboat Dental Center. Ooh. That was terrible. <laughs> that was the second time, bud. I got nothing. Total on Anderson's points. We got Anderson with 18 points so far for this Wildcats offense. 66 to 55. Davis in boats down. So, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens here down the stretch as it's going to be a tough, uh, tough hill to climb for Steamboat. They've only got 87 seconds left here in the game. So we'll see yeah. if they might not be able to pull a few quick uh, offensive points. And Got to hit some threes. Expect Ethan Piles, Aiden Kanaus, and Mac Rineker to all shoot their shot here in this fourth quarter as this will be Riley Flynn handling it. Flynn on the inbounds pass. He'll find Davison in the corner. He's got Linquist on him. Davison trying to get by, and he does. Successfully goes behind his back, and a diving Mac Rineker tries to steal it. Instead, it's kicked back out to Riley Flynn. Flynn now with Barry on him, and with a minute 12 to go, Jake Berry will foul. So a good foul there from the senior as Flynn try is going to take it out once more. Not in the bonus yet, so we're not shooting free throws after every foul. Blake Anderson now working versus Ethan Piles. Piles took a spill there as Anderson tried to get by. And they're going to get Ethan Piles for the foul, though. And that sends it to bonus territory. So, so Blake Anderson will be at the free throw line shooting one. Tough. Minute 10 to go. Yep. Anderson at the line. And this is one and one. Blake Anderson, 18 points tonight. His wow. free throw is no good. That's and surprising. Quickly now, it's Dawson Linquist gets it stolen there off the pass from Ethan Piles, but it's picked off right again by Rineker. Spin move inside, goes up for the layup. Won't get it, but he'll shoot two at the free throw line. Unbelievable. Matt Rineker is just having absolutely phenomenal what's his, game. What's his point total? Well, let's wait for these free throws, and then I'll let you know. Lou Williams of the Clippers dropping 50 the other night versus the He's Golden State Warriors. <laughs> <laughs> He's not there. <laughs> Yet. Yet. So after his first one in, second one as well. And that puts him at 29 points. Today. Wow, that, that would be his highest point total of the season. As he's already averaging 15 a game, this will up that for sure. And it's Flynn now on the inbounds pass. Flynn trying to find his teammate. Finds LeBron, and they're going to get Jake Berry for the foul quickly with under a minute left to go now, 56 seconds, 10-point game. Yep. Quick shout out to our sponsors here, Russell's Auto Salon, your premier full full service auto body shop where you always meet by accident. Call Russell's Auto Salon at 879-1515. Steam Ace Hardware, the helpful place for hardware, plumbing, tools, grills, garden, and more by offering our customers knowledgeable advice, helpful service, and quality products. Along with UC Health at Yampa Valley Medical Center, helping you get back to full strength when you are feeling short-handed. So I wasn't was that free throw first. It was good. First one free one throw. Territory, so he earns a second, and that one drops as well for the bond. Sailors now moving left to right. Got to make quick work of this as Jake Berry with a three-point attempt. No good there. Gathered by Davison. And over to Blake Anderson. Splits the defenders. Goes up past half court. Gets it by. It's just going to be tipped by Mac Rineker on the reach around. Sailed out of bounds. So Monument will still have possession. 42 seconds left here. Wildcats with the ball. It's going to be Anderson. Just trots towards the midcourt line. On him is Piles. He's going to foul him. And that'll send Anderson to the line. He'll shoot one and one here. 68-56. And you got to think that if he can make these, it very well maybe the 
nail in the coffin against your sailors to push it out to five possessions, and that is tough to come by in 37 seconds. First one for Anderson's up and down, and that's his first points. So if Blake Anderson fight. makes this second one, that'll put Monument at 70 points on the day, which is now what, we're, yeah, now what we're used to seeing from the Sailors' defense allowing. And sure enough, he does make that second one. 70 points now for the Monument Wildcats today. Ethan Piles now back the other way. Hand off to Doyne. Got to make quick work of this. Goes behind his back. Kicks it back out to Piles, and it's just going to be stolen by Blake Anderson with 25 seconds to go here, 70 to 56. And another foul against Anderson, and this time he'll shoot two from the line. That's against Piles, his fourth. 24 seconds left. 56 points for Steamboat. Not a bad offensive output. Obviously led by the 29 for Mac Rinker. Anderson drops his first one there. 21 now for Anderson. He's looking for 22. So some some uh, big points on both sides of the ball. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> As Mac Rinnaker back the other way now, goes up for the four-foot floater. No good. Gathers his own rebound. Goes up one more time. Gets that one to fall. 72-58 here. We've got 10 seconds to work. Lamont handles it for the Wildcats. And... He's going to find Davidson. This will finish it off, folks, as your Sailors drop another one after going 0-3 in that previous tournament. They did win on Tuesday versus Battle Mountain, but this is a tough one to swallow as they allowed 72. So that's your final, 72-58. Bright spot is uh, Matt Krenniker put 31 on. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> Uh, but the Sailors' defense didn't necessarily come and lock it down as they normally do. That's it for us from here at Kelly Meek Gymnasium. I'm wrapping things up and headed over to the Howie Dome. We've got hockey right here on KCOQ 100.5, the river, in just about an hour and 15 minutes or so. Just a little bit more than that. So keep it locked in because this is your Sailor Sports Connection for the day. KCOQ 100.5, the river, and online at SteamboatRadio.com. Or so. Just a little bit more than that. So keep it locked in because this is your Sailor Sports Connection for the day. KCOQ 100.5 The River and online at SteamboatRadio.com. Dude, I'll take care of everything. Sure? Yeah, can you just put those back? Sure? Yep. The River. KCOQ. Steamboat Springs. This is Skip Deardorff from Alpine Lumber here in Steamboat Springs. Alpine Lumber is a Colorado company that is committed to being the best supplier...